What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 15th of March in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today. And trust me, guys, there were a lot. And we're also going to be talking about some that I'm planning on trading and looking to trade here over the next couple of weeks in March of 2019. But before we do get into that, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. And if you're new to the community here, new to the channel, I have two links down below for you to join the Discord group as well as the Facebook group, and they are 100% free. Go down below, join those guys. I guarantee you, you'll find valuable information information with all of our group members and there they're all very very helpful so let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall markets? We had a pretty, pretty solid day here, especially in the middle of the day. The SPX hit highs of about $2,830 today. We ended up closing the day up about $14 up about half a percent here in terms of the S&P 500. The Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, up about the same amount, up about 0.54%, up nearly $140 on the day, with highs at about $25,900, nearly into the $26,000 level in terms of this index. And the NASDAQ Composite, guys, had the best day out of them all, finally in the $7,300 level right now, up nearly $80 on the day at the close, up about 1.08%. The NASDAQ guy is absolutely on fire. And this is mostly because the tech stocks, you know, Apple, Microsoft, they did absolutely amazing today. We're going to be talking about those in this video, but let's hop back to the SPX very quickly to do a quick little, you know, technical breakdown here, what I'm personally seeing. So for those of you guys that watched yesterday's video, we were talking about this level on the SPX at about 2815 to 2820, where we were struggling to get out of that level, right? We were talking about that level being a strong resistance. And if we were to break out of that level, which we clearly did today, hitting about 2830, this would be a new support level that we would be looking to see if the XPX would hold and therefore fill to the next resistance, which in this case is going to be at around $2,870. So take a look at this price action here, guys. We noticed that over the past couple of weeks, we all know from the beginning of 2019, the SPX has been doing amazing, right? At this point, let's see how much it's up. I guarantee you it's up nearly 20%. It's up about 17% from this bottoming out point near the Christmas time of 2018. And we got that dip a couple of days ago. And the fact that we held the higher low from the previous told me that we were continuing the uptrend pattern here in the overall markets and the 500 largest public publicly traded U.S. companies, which is the S&P 500, right? And we popped up and we were struggling to get above this level here at about 2815, which was a resistance from back, you know, back in December, I believe, or was it November? We peaked here in November, sold off, making it a resistance. We struggled back towards the end of February twice to get above that level. We got rejected. And now we struggled again a couple of days back to get above the level. But today, obviously, we popped above that level. And finally, we're looking to hold it as a new support. So for this upcoming week, guys, if we continue to push green, which there is a chance of us doing so, I'm going to be looking for a fill up to about 2870, which would put us up probably about another 2% to the upside. And if we just zoom out really quickly, we can see exactly how much more percent we need to get up there, roughly about 1.5% to get back up there, which, you know, with the way the market's been moving is pretty attainable in my personal opinion. So just keep an eye there. If the SPX continues this uptrend, we're slowly going to start to fill to the upside. But another possibility that I could see happening here, guys, is, is let's say we have another green day. Push up a little bit more, maybe to the 2830, 2840 level. And at that point, the R side is going to be overbought. 
And I think if we do get to that level here, you know, maybe even on Monday, you know, we could potentially start to pull back down to see if we're going to make another higher low to sell off, right? Because every time we've seen the SPX in the past couple of months push up for a couple of days to another higher high, you know, we've experienced a little pullback, right? Whether the pullback was 1%, like here, let's see how, how big this pullback was, about a 1.79% pullback from this higher high to the to the pullback. You know, this percent pullback was about 3%, I believe. Yup, we saw a 3% pullback. So I don't think it's too out of, you know, the odds here. I, I don't think there's, you know, not a chance at all really for us to get uh, a pullback. Honestly, I think it's very possible for us to get maybe a 2% pullback, a 3% pullback down here in terms of the SPX. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys probably do agree with me on that aspect. And the Dow Jones, guys, we all know the whole debacle with Boeing, and Boeing is one of the Dow 30 companies, which has held the Dow Jones down over the past couple of days while the SPX and the NASDAQ have been doing very well. But the key thing here is the Dow Jones finally broke out of the resistance at about $25,700, right around that area, and above the resistance at the 50 SMA that we were trading under yesterday in the previous couple of days here over the past week really here in the stock market. So now we're trading on this old resistance, which is now a new support. And we're going to see if we can fill up here to the top resistance at about 26,200. That would be the next target price in terms of the Dow Jones. Let's say the market's do sell off next week. Let's say we see a couple of red days. You know, I don't think it's going to be too out of the question that we break this level here. We slowly start to trend back down to about 25,400. And if we break this level, the next spot I'm going to be looking at is at about 25,000 flat. So the Dow Jones right now, not as overbought as the SPX, and I'm pretty sure as the NASDAQ. But we could experience, you know, a little bit of a pullback there if the markets do, you know, end up selling off a bit next week. And especially if Boeing ends up selling off more, you best believe that the Dow Jones is probably going to sell off, you know, or, or see, you know, a slight, um, you know, pullback, you know, with Boeing selling off more if that does end up happening, right? Of course, right now with the whole Boeing situation, I personally think there's more downside because this news has obviously not blown over. There's a lot, a lot of troubles right now with the Boeing, you know, the Boeing planes, companies that have Boeing planes, you know, people are pulling out, you know, they, they don't want to fly Boeing planes. Some of the flights got shut down. So I still see a lot of possible downside in that stock, which again, could bring down the Dow Jones a bit further. So the NASDAQ here, it filled perfectly in those levels that we were talking about in the past couple of videos. You guys remember what I was talking about in yesterday's video and the previous couple of videos? We saw the break above 7,200, and I called out that if we broke 7,200, the next spot we were going to fill to is at about 7,375, and that's literally exactly where we are right now in terms of the NASDAQ. If I go to the one day, one minute, we can see we pretty much got all the way up to that level. We almost saw a little double top action here, and then we started to sell off. We saw a break below the 180 SMA. We started to see a little sell off here towards the end of the market. But all in all, you know, we're trading in this level. The uptrend is still 100% intact. But like the SPX, guys, we are a bit overbought right now in terms of the NASDAQ. But we're doing very well. And let's just see for fun how far we are, you know, from all time highs, guys. We're about 4.5% off from this level at about 7,700 bucks here in terms of the NASDAQ, um, you know, index here. And the Dow Jones, let's just go back and see how far we are from those all time highs again. I'm going to start doing this every video, you know, as we get closer and closer to potentially getting to those all time highs. The Dow Jones is about 3.7% off from all-time highs, and the SPX, I believe, is like 4%, something like that, you know, 3.96, you might as well call that 4%, um, you know, off from the all-time highs here in terms of uh, the SPX, the S&P 500. So, guys, the markets, they've been pushing green, 
They've been pushing green. But the one thing I want to caution you about here, especially with the SPX, because this is what I mostly do my analysis on when looking at the entire market, is that every time we've pushed to an, a higher high here, we've experienced a pullback of about 1.5 to 3% here over the past couple of trading months since the beginning of 2019. So be careful of that, guys. Don't just think that we've been having a couple of green days here. We're going to continue to run up to 28.70. There's a big possibility that we're going to experience a one, two, three, maybe even 4% pullback here, you know, in the overall market since they have been doing very well over the past couple of days. But again, there's also a chance here that we continue to push up 2870. But in my personal opinion, there's about, if I were to put an odds on it right now, my opinion, again, do your own research. I would say there's about an 80% chance here that on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week, we push up a little bit. Let's say we do push up a little bit. I think there's an 80% chance that we do experience that pullback that I'm talking about and about a 20% chance that we do end up pushing up another 40 points to this next resistance, which again is about a 1.5% upside move from where we are right now. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the overall markets. Again, leave me a comment down below. What do you guys think? What's going to happen here? Are we going to sell off? I'll jump down below and I'll speak to you guys and communicate and we'll have a conversation, you know, you know, on what on what you think and what I think is going to end up happening here. So, let's talk about what I ended up trading today. And I ended up trading today crude oil or an ETF that trades on crude oil, which is ticker symbol UWT and we called this one out earlier today and we called it out yesterday and really the past couple of days because crude oil ended up breaking a critical resistance here a couple of days ago above, uh, I think it was like 57.75. And if we zoom in here, we can see it. We can see we were trading in this horizontal pattern and we were calling a breakout, a bullish breakout if we were to break 57.75. And we got that on the 13th of March. We ended up popping up here and we called out yesterday that we were at this level at about nearly $59 and we were talking about, I talked about in the video that I wanted to see a pullback in crude oil to get in on a position on UWT if we were to confirm the support here at the old resistance, which we did this morning. And we really had a beautiful uptrend for the entire day today on crude oil, which opened up a very nice move on uh, UWT. Just check it out here, guys. We pulled back bounced perfectly on the new support which was an old resistance and we uptrended for most of the day up to about what time is this about 218 eastern standard with about an hour and 40 left in the market and then we pretty much flatlined there for the rest of the day and if we go over to uwt which again is an inverse etf that trades based upon crude oil it goes up when crude oil goes up we got the pullback that we wanted from the close yesterday at about $17 down to about $16.29. That opened up the margin of profit that we wanted. And all we wanted to do, my goal on this trade, was to fill up the gap here that was opened, right? We see the um, you know margin that was opened, about 4%. My goal was to hop in and grasp some of that profit, and that's exactly what I ended up doing, right? I honestly waited to get in until we saw this bullish cross here. We ended up seeing the 50 SMA cross above the 180 SMA, which we all know is a bullish signal on any time frame that you're looking at. We got that signal here, and that's when I ended up hopping in at about 1665, 1667, I believe I hopped in. And then I wrote it up about 1.5%. You all know that I'm typically taking about 1% to 2% on my day trades. And that's exactly what I ended up doing here on UWT. And really, it just ended up playing out perfectly a textbook trade here on UWT. Sometimes, the beauty of trading, guys, sometimes things go exactly to your plan, which is awesome, right? But other times, they don't, right? Other times, things go completely opposite to what you were expecting to happen, which is why it's always great to mitigate your risk, not trade as much money in your account as you want. Really put in a small portion at first if you're willing to risk a small portion. Set stop losses and scale into your position. These are ways that you can mitigate your risk, especially if 
you're not really a risk, uh, you know, risk taker uh, trader, right? Let's say you're less risk adverse. These are ways that you can mitigate your risk. Stop losses, entering in small positions at first, scaling in, etc., etc. So that's what I did in terms of UWT today. And honestly, guys, this one's setting up for a nice trade next week too. Let's say crude oil ends up doing well. We end up really breaking or continuing this uptrend up to the next resistance, which is at about $61 at this point. That's what I'm going to be waiting for on this next fill to the next resistance. I think that would be an awesome opportunity you know, to get into UWT again as a day trade over the next couple of days as crude oil continues to, you know, push up here. So let's talk about a couple of stocks very quickly. And for those of you guys that don't know, on Sundays, I actually make a video where I'm talking about a bunch of different stocks. So I'm going to be talking about a lot more stocks on Sunday's video. So if you guys have a recommendation on what you want me to talk about in Sunday's video, drop a comment down below and I'll get to the stock. I'll try rather get to get to your stocks, um, you know, that you want me to cover or ETF, whatever, if you leave it down below in the comment section. And of course, in the call out section in our Discord group chat, you guys can also put them there as well. Whatever you guys find easier, please feel free and, uh, you know, I'll get to whatever you guys want me to talk about. So crude oil again, that's the first one that I'm watching for next week. Of course, this one's been extremely bullish, looking very good. And another two semiconductor companies that we were talking about in the group chat today, one being NVIDIA and the other one being, uh, what was it? Qualcomm, Qualcomm, ticker symbol C or not, uh, not C, QC. Oh, and this is one that was brought to my attention today that I actually haven't been tracking for a while, right? Qualcomm, we all know it's a semiconductor company, and we're seeing a nice little bullish reversal here on Qualcomm. And what I mean by that is we notice over the past couple of months, we've been getting slaughtered on Qualcomm in terms of their price, right? We notice from $76 down to about $50 per share. That was about a 34% drop in the stock. And then we start to see a reversal here. We found the bottom at about $49, which we can clearly see right now. We ended up breaking the 50 SMA resistance here. We formed a higher low, which is a good sign that we're reversing to the upside. And we've been riding the 50 SMA as a support rather than getting rejected by it as a resistance over these past couple of months, uh, months which again, indicates that we're uptrending, we could potentially be reversing. And what really solidified the reverse is this bullish cross we're noticing here at of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. This is a very, very important sign that I look for when potentially swing trading a stock, right? And now we notice that Qualcomm's a bit overbought, right? The RSI here, the relative strength index is showing that we're at about 70 right now with this recent pump that we saw, you know, over these past, I believe it might have been today, right? Yeah, the pump that we saw today, it brought us up to that higher high and really made it even more overbought on the longer term charts. So what am I, what am I going to be waiting for here, guys? And we can see it even better here on the 20 day one hour. I want to see a pullback and a confirmation of the bounce on the 50 SMA for the continuation of the uptrend before taking a position in Qualcomm. And further, what I'm going to be waiting for once I do take a position, if I take a position in Qualcomm, I'm going to be watching the 180 SMA or the 184 hour chart rather to see if it maintains the pattern here as well. Because once we see, let's say we see a break below the 50 SMA, that's going to be a break of pattern, and at that point, I'm not going to be wanting to trade Qualcomm, or I'm going to be cutting my losses if I'm already in Qualcomm, you know, as a swing trade. So that's my two cents, you know, on Qualcomm. It's looking pretty good, and someone pointed out the three-year, one-week chart on um, the longer, uh, you know, on the Discord group chat. This is a longer-term chart, and what I draw from this, guys, is that we really held the support at about $50. That's been a support over the past couple of years, which is actually a very good sign. If we're judging on a longer term basis here, you know, the moving averages don't seem too bullish, right? We noticed the 180 SMA, it's really just pointing down. The 50 SMA is also pointing down. So if you want to play it a bit safer here on a potential swing trade, you know, maybe you would want to wait for the break back into the $60 level before even considering 
putting money into Qualcomm because at that point, you know, we're going to be out of these resistance levels like we were back here and back here as well. And we could really be pushing up from there on a safer basis, if that makes any sense for you guys, right? Because if you were to jump in right now on a longer term chart, you know, this does seem a little bit scary, right? You're not out of the first resistance yet, not even out of the second resistance yet. And we could potentially get a bearish cross here. But if we broke above $60, that's going to be really bullish. The 50 SMA is going to be up, pointing up. And really, that's just going to solidify the bullish cross that we're seeing here. And that could be a better opportunity for you to get in. So it's all up to you on your risk tolerance, what you want to do there. And let's just hop into NVIDIA very quickly, ticker symbol NVDA. If we're just judging off this three-year, one-week chart, we're seeing a very, very positive thing here. We're seeing consolidation and a potential reversal to the upside on the 180 SMA, which again is a very good sign. And if we're just judging on the 184-hour chart, similar to Qualcomm, guys, the stock has gotten beaten down. We found the bottom at about 124, and from there, we've been making higher lows pushing up higher highs, continuing the uptrend very, very nicely, right? And today, actually, we pushed to the higher high at about 174 or 172-ish, I believe. So right now, just judging off of the 184-hour chart, you know, we are a bit overbought here, and we did see a big pump over the past couple of days. I think they had an acquisition. Let me just make sure. I'm pretty sure they did have an acquisition. If we can see it here... Um, Yep, this was it, Mellanox. They, they acquired Mellanox. I forget for how much money it was, but I'm pretty sure that was on the day where the stock pumped up like 10%, right? We were at $140 per share, and then literally we jumped up you know, all the way up to 160 in the matter of a day. I believe this was that day um, they acquired it. I forget, it was for a couple of billion dollars or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. But now, you know, I want to see a little bit of a pullback here before getting in. Or if we break above the 172 resistance, hold it as a support, I think that could be a potential bullish move to the next resistance at about 185. But as of right now, I'm just waiting to see what ends up happening, right? If we break this point, that could be a runner to the upside, but if we get rejected here, guys, and we slowly start to pull back, I'm going to be waiting for a bounce on either the 50 SMA as a support level, which would give us a nicer entry, in my opinion, or the 180 SMA as a support level. So that's what I'm watching you know, in terms of NVIDIA stock. Let's take a look at Microsoft, guys, because we all know Microsoft hit all-time highs today, which is absolutely insane, right? It hit about $117.25, um, you know, per share today, which, again, is an all-time high. And I got some questions on whether or not I think Microsoft's a good swing trade. And personally, guys, I stay away from companies that are already at their own excuse me, already at their all-time highs. Do I think Microsoft can go up further? There's definitely a possibility, right? Especially if the markets continue to push, you know, Microsoft can very well follow. But that's a gamble that I'm not willing to take, right? I'm, I feel much better getting in at the dip than getting in at all-time highs or at the peak of the uptrend, especially when it's overbought, right? It, it, you know, I can't really justify me getting in at these levels, but I think, do I think it can go up more? Sure, maybe it can get to 118, maybe 119, but I think there's many other places where your money can do better work for you than in Microsoft stock. So for now, I'm just going to be watching Microsoft stock very simply. I'm going to be seeing where are we going. If we pull back maybe and hold, you know, 110, maybe on the 50 SMA as a support, you know, maybe that could be a better entry. We'll see, guys. But as of right now, I'm not I'm not touching Microsoft, uh, you know, not really right now, guys. I need to see a pullback. But Apple actually ended up playing out exactly as we talked about in Sunday's video last week, right? I uploaded, or was it Sunday's video? I think I talked about it in my three stocks on swing trading video. Apple did very, very well. We talked about it on the break above the 175 resistance for the potential fill up to the next resistance at about 185. It did exactly that. 
An analyst actually upgraded both Apple and Facebook, which is why Apple is doing very well right now. It could be a catalyst on why Apple is doing very well. Facebook was doing well until we saw yesterday that two executives left. I believe the uh, the chief product officer left, and the dude, the guy that you know was in the uh, uh, WhatsApp left as well. So two big executives left. Investors don't really like that. They kind of you know get scared. It, like they they think. What's going on? Why are these people leaving? You know, the stock ended up falling today about $4 per share. But that doesn't scare me at all, guys. You know, Facebook, the fundamentals are still there. And I'm sure they're going to replace those people with very good other executives that are going to take their roles. So, you know, that's what I'm looking at, guys. Now with Apple, you know, it's a bit overbought. So I wouldn't be surprised if we ended up pulling back here a bit. Maybe back down to 180 for a bounce on the 50 SMA. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if that did end up happening, right? If that happened, I would not be shocked, right? So Facebook right now at a key technical level on the 180 SMA here on the four-hour chart. You know, if we break this level, you know, I hope we do because I want to buy more Facebook stock, you know, preferably down here, you know, in the 140s, 130s. But again, let me not get ahead of myself because I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon unless some very, very bad news comes out. But if we do see this technical break here on Facebook, you know, I would wait for a potential hold on 160 as for a potential trade here in the horizontal pattern. But if we get a break out of there, you know, we could be headed back down to the 150s. Who knows, guys? So that's it for today's video. I'm going to end it up here. I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. And again, remember, Sunday, I'm going over a ton of different stocks. The video is coming out at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time around there. So if you have any stocks, drop them down below in the comment section or put them in the call-out section in our Discord group chat. And join that Discord group chat, guys, if you haven't already. It's 100% free. The link's down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Video coming tomorrow on should you sell your stocks before the recession. It's a good video. Watch that video. I guarantee you you'll find value in it coming out at about 10 a.m. Eastern Standard or 11 a.m. Eastern Standard. So be on the lookout for that. I'll catch you all then. Have a great weekend again. Thanks for watching. Peace out.